You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. i just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Songs of America's Heroes, an album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Brian Weaver, Rowdy Johnson, just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, I've battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, bye, bye, bye. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year. And I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in many lives. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a rider's file for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com.
You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, this is Jesse. How y'all doing out there today? You know, I miss you when we're not talking. Now, you can't tell me by this point. You don't believe me? All right, just as a reminder, just as a reminder, we are, my show, Jesse's POV, can, isn't always just on, only available at klrnradio.com. You can find the show on iTunes, Google Play, Podcast.com, Pocket Podcast, Blueberry, and many, 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 many other places where podcasts can be found. And you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. So... Thank you all for listening. I probably don't say that often enough, but I do see that you're listening. I see the numbers. Thank you. Now, I've got a story that I'm going to bring up first. Before we get to all the usual, it's the splash of the day. So, all right, many of you have heard there was an F.A. 18 Super Hornet on Final Approach, and it went splash into the ocean instead of landing on the carrier. Well, pilot was safe. Pilot was picked up shortly after it was it was during a routine night flight routine flight operations during a transit in the Cell B C. Uh the FAA team was assigned to Carrier Wing Two, was on pi- final approach to the Carl Vinson. Incidents under investigation, pilots being assessed by medical, no apparent injuries. But it was a bunch of money in the drink. But other than a bit of a splash on several news pages and the fact that the pilot ejected safely, it's not news. Okay? Okay. But I wanted, I'd I'd seen several people bring it up, so I felt... Compelled. Now, we missed the little anniversary. No, not my show anniversary, although that is on quickly approaching if it hasn't already passed. I honestly don't keep track, folks. This month was the 75th anniversary of the Doolittle Raid, also known as the Tokyo Raid. It was an Allied mission during World War II with direct relevance to modern military's ability to operate together. Because it was a combination of Navy and Air Force and they continue to demonstrate their, their cooperation today. 75 years ago, the, the Doolittle Raid pushed Air Force bombers outside their normal operating envelope. They were designed to fly from airfield, but the USS namesake ship provided the perfect mobile launch point to send them into combat from the sea. 
The Navy didn't have planes that could reach Tokyo, and the Air Force didn't have any runways close enough. Together, the Air Force provided the planes, and the Navy provided the namesake. So, members of the 970th Airborne Corps Control Squadron have been underway with USS Nimitz and been working directly with the Commander Carrier Strike Group 15 to help prepare the Nimitz for a deployment. The Nimitz is current underway conducting composite training exercises with the Nimitz for an up in preparation for an upcoming deployment. So, and before anybody yells about troop movements, folks, or you shouldn't be broadcasting that. Please, please, please. I got the information off the, Na the Navy's own website. Yes, Commander U.S. Pacific. I got it off the Command Pacific Fleet, Commander of Pacific Fleet. Na CPF. Navy. Mil. So, guess what? It's out there. Okay. So please, I don't. I do not provide intelligence given to me that could harm our troops. You guys ought to have figured that one out by now if you're a long-time listener. Otherwise, welcome to the shit. Welcome aboard. I love my listeners. What can I say? I will tell you what I can find in open source, be that a news story or an official government source. Now, if I use something like Press TV, I always tell you. Because, well, sometimes they have some wonky stuff. What can I say? What can I say? Sometimes I will use Iranian news sources or various other things. Hey, I like to bring you as much news as I can. That includes sometimes I'll use their audio, but I always tell you. All right. Moving right along. Yes, yes, yes. I've got Raqqa. I've got Syria. I've got Iran. And I've got some stuff from Israel. Because Secretary of Defense Mattis is winding up a visit to the Middle East. Gotta say, he doesn't stay home much, does he, kids? So, let's kick off the show with, I want to do a little flashback on some audio clips that Secretary Mattis made about North Korea in air, and then we will actually, and then we will get on to some of his more recent clips. Uh, you're aware that, uh, that uh, the leader in North Korea again recklessly uh, tried to uh, provoke uh, something uh, by launching uh, a, a missile. It was not an intercontinental ballistic missile. It failed on launch. And it shows why we're working so closely right now with the Chinese coming out of the Mar-a-Lago meeting between the two nations leaders, ours and the Chinese, to try to get this under control and aim for the denuclearized Korean Peninsula that China and the United States, South Korea, Japan, we all share that same interest. All right, so that was Secretary Mattis at the start of his trip. I've got some audio today with him, with Secretary Lieberman. Yes, there... Israel's defense secret defense minister Lieberman. Now, this is not a translator. 
And I've also got a clip here from Mike Pence I've just got to play. Just because I love it. So we're going to kick off with that and then we'll get to the comments from the press conference. We will defeat any attack and meet any use of conventional or nuclear weapons with an overwhelming and effective American response. The United States of America will always seek peace, but under President Trump, the shield stands guard and the sword stands ready. Yes, the shield stands guard and the sword stands ready, folks. In other words, as I've heard People have been echoing around the world. America's back. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We are back on the world stage. We are no, not taking things lying down. Now, we're going to start off with Iran. And here was Israel's defense minister. I've got two audio clips about Iran main problem not only for us but for entire world it's a excess it's an excess of evil from north korea to tehran to damascus into hezbollah in beirut and no doubt the same the main link in this chain it's iran yes the main link in the chain is iran now, why does he say that? Let's take a listen. Main problem, not only for us, but for the entire world, it's, a excess, it's an excess of evil from North Korea to Tehran to Damascus into Hezbollah in Beirut. And no doubt the same, the main link in this chain, it's Iran. Sorry, I did not mean to play the same tr Clip twice. Hang on. Here's the one I meant to play. Oops. I goof once in a while. So just bear with me and here's the right clip. But of course we're happy to see a new policy review, a new approach. And first of all regarding their terrorist activity. Not Hezbollah and not uh, Hamas are not able to exist even one week without Iranian support. Iranian operatives, as they are trying to, as I mentioned, to undermine the stability uh, even in Yemen and even in Iraq. Their uh, efforts to create more proxies and more militias, it's also, I think it's a big concern for the both states. And I think that uh, Iran, it's clear, is the biggest sponsor in the world of terror. And according to this, uh, their position, uh, it's crucial to place more pressure, more sanctions on the Iranian regime. Yes, we have to do more against Iran. More sanctions, more policy shifts, and we have to keep them from creating more havoc in the Middle East, folks. Now, I've also got some clips from our very own Mattis. And here's favorite, my favorite one about Iran. In addition to our campaign to defeat ISIS, we also recognize the need to confront the destabilizing activities of Iran. Iran continues to threaten Israel and its neighbors with ballistic missiles through its maritime and cyber activities and through proxies and surrogates, including Lebanese Hezbollah, a terrorist organization helping to keep Assad in power in Syria. Now, for those of you who remember your Middle East scorecard, you got it out? What? You, you, you're you telling me you don't have a Middle East scorecard? Well, pull out a piece of paper and a pen, because we're going to create one, give you one to play, play off of right now. And for those of you regular listeners, you know I always start at one place. And that is Bashar al-Assad in Syria. Yes, got to talk about him. Because, well, in a way, he's the linchpin. So, Bashar al-Assad is being propped up by Russia and Iran. This isn't news. No, 
This is not news, folks. Now, as Secretary Mattis said, yes, as Secretary Mattis said, he, Assad, let's see if I got the audio clip timed right. In addition to our campaign to defeat oh. ISIS, we... Let's see if I can get this timed right. ...helping to keep Assad in power in Syria. Yes. They're using their proxies, namely Hezbollah, to keep Assad in power. Now, for those of you who live under rocks, remember Assad is the same one who gassed his own people. And there is nothing cool about that, folks. Nope. There is nothing cool about gassing your own people. There is absolutely nothing. So, Assad, sorry, dude. You got to go. Because, well, you're just not a good actor on the world stage. I'm sorry, folks, but anybody who gasses their own people <coughs> and causes that is not worth a darn thing in my book. So... There is no point to make your people cough and choke just so you can stay in power. Now, of course, you have to remember, Assad calls anybody with a gun who isn't him. Yes, anybody who isn't him or his troops is called a terrorist. So, the rebels who are fighting simply for freedom, in his mind, are terrorists. Now, that's not how I view it. And that is not how most people I know view, view it. So, what can I say? What can I say? All right, moving right along. We've got more on this, so let's get to it. Now, Israel isn't always the innocent partner. I will happily tell you that. However, comma, I will also tell you That they are usually defending themselves. They do attack people, but they, when they go to drop a bomb, you know what they do? Which I find is absolutely freaking amazing. They do something called a knock first. They drop a little tiny something on the roof. To let people know, get out now. Yes, they drop something on the roof of the building before they drop the bomb. How long in advance? Don't know. However, comma, what I can tell you, 
Yes, what I can tell you is that they do everything they can. Now, I know you guys can't see me, but there is something I've been meaning to mention on air. Yes, there is something. I am part of a group that does something called Red Shirt Friday. And I know I'm rambling a bit, but you're just going to have to cope, kids. Red Shirt Friday. And I want, I'm going to ask all, I rarely ask you guys to do anything. But I am going to ask you to do this. Next Friday, I want all my listeners to go pull a red shirt out of the closet and wear it on Friday. So, why? Why red? Red is call. Red is short for remember everyone deployed. Yes. Remember everyone deployed. So Like I said, folks, it is important. All right. Sorry to get sidetracked. I just got a tweet about it. That's what caused me to get off track. And yes, I am on Twitter at Jesse's POV. You can follow along with me live on the show. I don't send out too many tweets while, while I'm there. You can also head on over to Spreaker and search for Jesse's POV or KLRN Radio and chat with me there. Yes, live, while I'm on air, and I will give you a shout-out. The other th way to get in touch with me, and I'm getting there now, is we have a chat room at klrnradio.com. Yes, klrnradio.com slash chat. Or just go right on over to our website, and the first thing you'll see at the top of the page is a lovely little menu. And yes, the chat room will work with your mobile phone. Yes, it will. All right. Now, let's get back to this press conference because I got more audio to get through. This was, I found some of these clips were very, very telling. Telling. So, all right, here's Mattis talking about Dash. Looking across the region, we in the United States recognize ISIS represents a clear and present danger not only to Syria and Iraq, but to Israel and other countries in this region, to Europe, and ultimately to the U.S. homeland. The coalition campaign against ISIS in Syria and Iraq, as you noted, Minister, it is on track, and we have accelerated and intensified that campaign to surround and isolate the enemy so we methodically remove its physical caliphate. Yes. Now, a little bit on Syria while we're here. Now, this clip's a little longer than the rest, but I know you guys are capable. There can be no doubt in the international community's mind uh, that Syria has retained chemical weapons in violation of its agreement uh, and its statement that it had removed them all. There is no longer any doubt. Uh, the amount of it I don't want to get into right now. We don't reveal uh, some of that detail because uh, we don't want to reveal how we're finding out. Uh, but the bottom line is, uh, I can say authoritatively, they have retained some. It's a violation of the United Nations Security Council resolutions and it's going to have to be taken up diplomatically and they'd be ill-advised to try to use any again. We made that very clear with our strike. So I'll just leave it at that. They have dispersed their aircraft. Uh, no doubt they've dispersed their aircraft uh, in recent days. Now, Secretary of Defense Mattis. He well, let's face it, he's a Marine Corps general with a nickname Mad Dog. 
You don't take this stuff lying down, folks. All right, all right. Before I go to break, and I know break is coming up on me. Yes, break is definitely trying to sneak up on me. I do want to remind you the album Adam Battle, Battle Cry is available on Amazon Zon and iTunes. And I will, will see you on the other side. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network. Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. I just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Sons of America's Heroes, an album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Brian Weaver, Rowdy Johnson, just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, I've battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, bye, bye, bye. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year. And I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in many lives. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new 
new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call Invent Help today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put Invent Help in your corner. To get your free inventor's information, call 1 800 353 6490. That's 1 800 353 6490. Again, 1 800 353 6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Thank you for hanging in there with me over that commercial break. And yes, we are back. Now, we are going to shift gears. We're going to go from talking about Syria and his stupidity. Yes, serious stupidity. Imagine that one, folks. Sorry, it ain't that hard to imagine. I'm sorry, it's just not. So. Syrian stupidity, what can can I say? Yes, yes, yes. All right. We are moving on to Dash. I know... I know I haven't had a lot on Dash. Now, this I found this just plain funny before we get into the real seriousness. Because, come on. Sometimes, I gotta sneak up on it. Well, this was how the uh, General Major General Martin introduced himself. I'm Joe Martin, Commander of the Combined Joint Forces Land Component Command which includes all the coalition ground forces in Iraq, and I also command the 1st Infantry Division out of Fort Riley, Kansas, which means I'm a big red one soldier. Now, I want you just to do me a favor, and after the show, Google the big red one. They've done a lot of interesting things. Now, first, he had some information about East Mosul that I found particularly interesting. Over... 250,000 boys and girls are now free to return to more than 320 schools that have been reopened by the government of Iraq. Over 76 Maslawis have returned home where the government of Iraq is working hard to improve the quality of life and reestablish essential services. Markets have reopened and work programs are in place. The, through coordinated efforts with the government of Iraq, the UN, and along with humanitarian partners, Mosul's residents are on track to a sense of normalcy that existed prior to the brutal rule of ISIS in the city. Yes. They are beginning to hear this in East Mosul. Thank you. They needed it. Now, we went on to talk about a little bit more. Now, this talk about Mosul, this is, we're going to go to West Mosul now. The west side is a very diversified urban terrain. Uh, We're talking about a place that's about half the size of Philadelphia, about 100,000 buildings, about 1,500 kilometers of roads that they've got to clear uh, that's occupied by a civilian population that's been under the control of Daesh and with an enemy that will indiscriminately use the population for whatever reason they want. So it makes it a tough fight, and so it's tough to put a timeline on that fight. But what I can tell you is we see progress each and every day, and the Iraqi security forces work their way through the complexity and the problems that are associated with this urban environment very well. Now, I apologize for the audio quality on that clip. It Remember, these press conferences are done via the Internet. So sometimes even the original audio I get has its issues. All right, here's another one. 
ISIS's capability and cohesion as an organization is weakening. It's under pressure all the way across Iraq. With ISIS's targeting of civilians trying to escape their brutal executions of Iraqis who want to be free of oppression, they show it as they who are responsible for the suffering in Mosul. The number of civilians murdered by ISIS on a weekly basis is in the hundreds, with evidence showing that that's increasing. This is further proof that as their military position worsens, so too does their inhumanity. Let me remind everybody that the Iraqi security forces are winning and defeating ISIS in Mosul, and they've been doing so for over 18 months throughout Iraq. They continue to make steady progress on multiple fronts and demonstrate their care for the civilian population every day. They've already retaken critical infrastructure such as the international airport and government buildings. And remember, only two short years ago, ISIS was on the gates of Baghdad. Now, the Iraqi security forces are about to recapture Iraq's second largest city, and ISIS is reeling from defeat after defeat across the country. Yeah, I know that clip was just a little bit long, folks, but I wanted to play it in its entirety because I felt it was important. Now, not all the news coming out of East Mosul. Yes, I'm differentiating East from West is bad. Iraqi crowds flocked to the waterfalls of eastern Mosul on Friday to savor simple freedoms like dancing or wearing colorful clothes that were strictly banned during almost three years of Dash rule. Music blasted from tall speakers mounted on pickup trucks and minivans. Children splashed in the water in the city's Shalot Waterfall District or rode bikes, horses, and donkeys in the surrounding park. It was like a mass picnic. 2,000 people out enjoying the sunshine, while fighting between the U.S.-backed forces and Dash raged only 20 kilometers, that's 12.4 miles away, in the part of Mosul west of the Tigris River. The citizens say, we were besieged. We are happy now. Families can now go out. Everyone stay home. And that's Moyad Ahmed, who is out with his wife and daughter at the park along a tributary to the Tigris north of the city. They would ask about negative or relevant things. Dashwood. The Sunni Muslim militants enforced a strict interpretation of Islam during their reign, it including forcing men to grow long beards and women to cover their faces. Anyone breaking the rules would be severely punished. The atmosphere was gone on Friday as women undulay with joy, all wearing bright colors rather than the black dress enforced by Dash. Beer and whiskey bottles lay on the ground. Everything is great now. We could not do this under Dash. Back then, everything was forbidden. They would ask men about their beer length and women about face veils. Now everyone is happy. We would come and they wouldn't let us picnic. They would say, cover your face. This is banned. This is haram. This is halal. And haram is the word for forbidden and halal is the word for allowed. Sporting a pink headscarf, his wife, Um Kasim, chimed in. They were harassing us about men's pant length, pants length, beards, and face veils. We are in heaven now. We were in hell under dash. Even at the waterfall park, signs of war were not far away. There were burned out cars along, along the road leading to the area. Iraqi soldiers manned checkpoints at a bridge leading to the park and patrolled the area to ensure the safety of day trippers who snapped photos with selfie sticks, smoked hookahs, and queued to buy shawarma and Moroccan chicken. But people were dancing with friends and enjoying a day out. Well deserved day. Thank you, Iraqi security forces and, and coalition advisors. You brought laughter back to what I'm sure was a very besieged people. All right, moving right along. Yes, I've got more on Mosul, folks. The drones are especially dangerous. Dash fighters have been sending more and more unmanned aircraft into the air, according to the Iraqi army. Buzzing overhead, the ground control release 
ground-controlled drones release deadly explosives down upon the ranks of their opponents. In the meantime, the Iraqi military has adapted to the aerial threat, but the drones, small and therefore difficult to distinguish from afar, are still dangerous, particularly in street bad battles when soldiers don't have time to keep an eye on what might fly overhead. The battle for Mosul is the toughest, most brutal phase of this war. It's probably the toughest and most brutal close quarters combat I've experienced in, his, in my 34-year career, the officer, the un, anonymous American military officer is quoted as saying. Reports from Iraqi and American military have also indicated that this, this pointing to many times, dash suicide bombers have tried using explosive-laden vehicles to hit deep into the ranks of their opponents. The Iraqi military has better prepared itself for this danger. In order to stop fast-approaching vehicles, each troop has soldiers armed with grenades. As soon as they retake a street, soldiers erect soil embankments to leave no chance to suicide bombers. But this certainly does not protect them from the many booby traps armed with explosives Dash has left behind. In field hospitals that look advanced, for example, they would booby trap a field hospital that looked abandoned. The difficulties pose not only strategic but also ethical challenge. Mortal catastrophes are mapped out. On March 7, for, the, for example, the U.S. military shot a vehicle carrying explosives. The explosion razzed a house where Dash had assembled civilians to act as human shields. Some 200 people were unfortunately killed in the blast. Anti-Dash forces have retaken approximately three-quarters of Mosul. Nevertheless, they are preparing for a longer battle. For one thing, Dash fighters have entrenched themselves in the Old City, which is difficult to enter, and they've been fortifying it for the past two years. The mission to eradicate these fighters will mean taking over the quarter house by house. Roughly half a million people have fled the city amid the intense fighting. A small pocket of the civilian population does support Dash. They, support, they justify their support of the terrorist group by pointing to the Iraqis' government policies, which in their opinion favor the minority Shiites in power. Others join Daesh following massive death tolls inflicted by the Iraqi army and its allies. Hundreds, if not thousands, have been killed in Mosul. Moreover, Shiite militias seized numerous Sunni villages around Mosul. We fear the excessive use of force will cost lives of thousands more civilians, creating hardships and hard feelings that will only set the stage for the next dash or worse. And that was an Iraqi citizen who didn't want to be identified. Between 8,500 and 12,630 civilians in both Iraq and Syria have been wounded since the beginning of the anti-dash mission in August 2014. And this is according to journalist-led Transparency Project, Air Wars. The figures extended through April 18th of this year. Air Wars estimates that between 3,100 and 5,000 civilians were killed in assaults carried out during that time period. In light of these figures, U.S. military says a political process must flank the military's battle in order to prevent Sunnis from both countries allying themselves with Daesh. A, victor, a military victory over Daesh can only be the beginning, said former General, U.S. General, retired David Petraeus, who battled against the Sunni uprising in Iraq from 2007 to 2008. The insurrection saw an alliance between the local population and Al-Qaeda. The military defeat of Daesh is only the first step. The much more challenging task is to use all elements of American and coalition power to help achieve political solutions that will again, once again create fertile grounds for extremists and thereby the one that will avoid once again creating fertile ground for extremists and thereby the rise of ISIS 3.0. According to U.S. Commander Stephen Townsend, this means offering prospects to the oppressed Sunni population. They need to be convinced they have a future in Iraq. If this works, a long-term peace in Iraq would be possible. If this fails, 
terror and war will continue. So yes, while this is a military campaign filled with sounds like this, and there is also a campaign to win hearts and minds. And that is by far important. All right, many of you have heard me read out the stories about the Dash use of chemical weapons. Here is the official military take. Dash has used chemicals uh, in the vicinity of Mosul. Uh, the, the chemicals have had no impact on the Iraqi security forces. Uh, they had no impact on our forces. And uh, we're not certain at this time exactly what the agent is. We have sent uh, back for testing, but we're still waiting for the outcomes of those testing based on my understanding. So he wasn't willing to identify the chemical weapon, although various other reports, not from official government sources, have said it is mustard gas. Now, back to the human shields. The U.S. headquarters overseeing the war against Daesh released video footage showing fighters from the terror network using civilians as human shields. While the video cannot portray intent, it does show actions including knowingly establishing fire positions while civilians were present. The coalition, through full motion video and real-time surveillance, observed civilians and therefore did not respond with an airstrike against the position. CENTCOM, short for Central Command's decision to release the two-minute declassified video compiled from hours of footage taken on March 29th over the besieged city follows an earlier incident in, Mar er, incident earlier in March in which a U.S. airstrike on Mosul may have accidentally killed hundreds of civilians. Please note the airstrike is still under investigation. The command had pledged shortly after that strike on March 23rd it would release a video showing fighters from Daesh purposely rounding up civilians <clears throat> in Mosul and putting them into the same buildings they were using as fight fighting positions. Dash is smuggling civilians into buildings so we won't see them and trying to bait the coalition to attack to take advantage of the public outcry and deter our actions in the future. So, like I said, Now, defense spokespeople have indicated the video relating to March 23rd might be released, but it has been delayed pending a review for operational security reasons. So, like I said, it's going to be a while before we find out that. One more Dash story, and then we got to touch on quackers, just briefly. A sniper from the Iraqi Federal Police Unit aims towards a Daesh group position in West Mosul during an ongoing response, ongoing operation to recapture the city from the jihadist. A few hundred meters from an iconic mosque in West Mosul, the Iraqi sniper has his eyes glued to his scope as he searched for Daesh group jihadists. Iraqi forces are battling to retake Mosul from Daesh after the group overran the city in 2014. Daesh fighters are within range. We're tracking them day or night. Inside a darkened room in a four-story building retaken from Daesh, the sniper tries to steady his rifle on sandbags. A map of the surrounding neighborhoods, hand-drawn in red, hangs on the wall in front of him. He and his colleagues stay in the same position for up to 12 hours a day, he says, for two weeks straight. Get food three times a day, he adds, and leave their positions only when it's really necessary, like to go to the bathroom. We kill between three and five jihadists a day. Nearby, another sniper lies on his stomach, the end of his barrel jutting out through a tiny hole in the wall in the direction of the Al Nuri Mosque. The ancient Habda, a leaning minaret that has, and the adjacent minaret that has long been Mosul's most recognized landmark. To help the snipers find their targets in a nearby room, Iraqi soldiers take turns tracking Daesh fighters through binoculars. 
On a screen, members of a special unit survey thermal footage sent in from aircraft above the city. We're the ones who decide to shoot or not. We have thermal binoculars, but we check the data with our colleagues to avoid an error. An officer in the group said snipers recently killed a, a Dash Emir or leader in West Mosul. Our sniper have, has kill, have killed a, a Dash Emir on the West Bank, creating great confusion in the old city, i.e. West Mosul. Fearing airstrikes, jihadists went to the leader's funeral unarmed, but forced civilians to attend to act as human shield. The presence of, the, of civilians in the old city is a major obstacle, and the old city itself is an obstacle, as you can't get military vehicles down the narrow streets. All right. Let's talk about North Korea. What more can we do? And I know I am coming up to the end of my time, and I'm not going to run too far over, but I do want to get this one story. I got to talk about quackers, or it wouldn't be a show. I mean, come on. If I don't talk about quackers or Kim Jong-un, is it really a show? All right, what more can we do with North Korea? Well, how about secondary sanctions? What, what are secondary sanctions? Well, we've already sanctioned the state. And while it is, they are becoming to, beginning to be effective, there is more we can do. We can sanction the companies that trade with North Korea. Now, adopting sa secondary sanctions against North Korea could cut the last tendrils of its access to the international financial system. N North Korean banks and trading companies operate in China through China-based front companies. These front companies, in turn, have accounts at Chinese banks from which they're able to do business globally, including in the United States. States. If the United States were to adopt secondary sanctions against North Korea, that move would almost certainly force some Chinese banks to choose between facilitating the re regime's international banking capacity and maintaining their own access. Some are observers do suspect that this could irritate the Chinese government and would therefore make secondary sanctions inadvisable. So, who knows? what we're going to do, but I think it's time to up the ante on North Korea. All right, folks. I've got one last, you know I always like to end on a silly, goofy, or happy story. Yes, you know. So, I found one out of Western Mosul. Iraqi forces in Mosul have freed an 11-year-old Yazidi girl who was kidnapped and sold as a slave by Daesh. The girl was taken by jihadists from the village of Kosho, south of the Yazidi hub of Sinjar in northern Iraq, together with her mother and sisters. She was freed during an operation by security forces on Thursday in the western Mosul neighborhood of Tanik. And this is according to Fed Iraqi Federal Police Chief Lieutenant General Lieutenant General. Raid Shakir Jawdat. The elite counterterrorism service has been operating the area and secured more than half of the neighborhood on Thursday. They who kidnap these children are monsters, Jawad Batat Jawad's top aide said in a statement. Beyond Dakil, a prominent Yazidi lawmaker, helped bring her minority's plight to the world's attention when Daesh jihadists swept through the region in 2014 and said the girl's release had been carefully planned. When Daesh took her village on August 15, 2014, she was eight years old and was kidnapped with her mother and sisters. She was literally initially taken to Tel Afar and sold on to Mosul. Yazidis are neither Arab nor Muslim, and when Daesh swept across northern Iraq almost three years ago, it carried out massacres against the minority, which the United Nations says qualifies as genocide. 
The girl's two sisters and mother were brought back from Dash, a method which were bought back from Dash, a method which has been used by authorities and Yazidi organizations to free hundreds of women. They now live in Germany. The girl and her family are originally from Kosho, the same village. Yazidi's rights activist and Nobel Peace nominee Nadia Murad is from. Her cousin, who lives in a camp for the displaced near Dohuk in autonomous Kurdistan, is coming to fetch her. She will be reunited with family and friends soon. By the way, the Yazidi community follows its own unique faith and will celebrate their new year on Thursday. So, like I said, there's your good news out of West Mosul. And that wasn't an easy find, folks. All right, I got to remind you one thing. I'm missing my friend Scott Harvath, a.k.a. retired police sergeant Terry O'Hara. So here's some words from him to remind you of something. Uh, For any... Anyone going through any type of personal battle, whether it's uh, cancer, PTSD, depression, a personal challenge that, they're, that they want to do, they want to go climb Mount Everest, you need to stay in the fight. And when I say that, I mean mentally. If you're not mentally in the fight, if you don't stay in the fight, you can't win. All right, folks. And on that note, I'm out of here.